Welcome to the Traffic Domination Podcast, where entrepreneurs come for traffic answers. And here are your hosts, Rob Reese and Wayne Crow. Hey, what's going on, guys? Rob Reese here, along with the host with the most, Wayne Crow. How are you guys? Is that my new tagline? Is it the host with the most? Is host that... with the most. That's right. That's right. That's what <laughs> I'm going to call you. That's what we're going to call you with. Now, now, (laughs) guys, this is going to be a really, really uh, important episode that you're going to want to look into because we're going to talk about the recent situation with Mobe, uh, how you can kind of keep yourself safe when it comes to investing in online businesses and everything that pertains to really making sure you cover your butt, okay? Because... At the end of the day, we all want to make sure that A, we are getting into something legitimate and B, we want to make sure that this is something that is going to be sustainable. And uh, if if you are in internet marketing, you heard about what happened to MOBE. You'll know, yeah. Uh, MOBE, uh, which stands for My Online Business Education, was a, a internet marketing opportunity to where uh, they provided internet marketing trainings, and ultimately the goal was to really recruit people into the uh, program. And based on a number of factors, and we'll maybe touch on some of them, Wayne, uh, yeah. is is what got them on the radar of the FTC. Uh, the FTC being the Federal Trade Commission. These guys are the police of the business world. Uh, they will come and and hacksaw Jim Duggan you down <laughs> if uh, they find if they find some nefarious. Th- you know hacksaw Jim Duggan? Uh, yeah, yeah, I ain't heard that for a long while. <laughs> yeah, but but they will come crashing down on your party, and you know I, I don't have any personal stake in Mob. Uh, I know people who have been involved with them. Uh, I've never heard of anything. Uh, overly, you know, uh, caution, overly uh, worrisome about them in the past. But uh, I know Wayne, being in the solo ad business, you've had your uh, hand with this company for quite some time. You you kind of are, are acquainted with them. Do, why don't you just, before we get into all the FTC stuff, before we get into any of the legality stuff, before we get into any of the things that they got in trouble for, why don't you give me kind of a little rundown as to what your thought was on Mob as just a business, uh, your personal opinion, uh, and yeah. maybe give us give give our audience a little bit of background as to who they are. They're pretty much, um, as far as I'm aware, the biggest network marketing company, online network marketing company in the world. I'd say the biggest kind of uh, education company is they dub themselves. They pay the biggest commissions. I mean. I, I've i never been a member. Uh, I never would have been a member. I know plenty of people that are, and I know their commissions. One of their products was something like $125,000 to give you an idea. So you're not talking, wow. you're not talking seven, fifteen, twenty dollars $20, even, you know, some people will see three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 high ticket. That's not high ticket. Move had. $125,000, probably bigger than that. With there, they just bought an island recently, Serenity Island. Um, there's probably bigger things planned with that as well. So when when people get annoyed with them, someone get annoyed with a $7 product, they're not likely to kind of chasing down. Someone get annoyed for 125 grand, that's an eighth of a million, that's a lot of money. The stakes are very different, and the, I think the uh, levels people will go to are very different if that makes sense so they're going to chase um and i never never thought they'd be shut down um i must have never thought anything would happen to them i don't know their exact turnover but will be hundreds of millions they've paid out just a single affiliate affiliates tens of millions in commissions um so they would they were i would say pretty much the daddies if you like in that kind of world they were pretty much the daddies so yeah. for something to happen to them you know it's going to send everyone knows about it every pretty much every internet marks and now as you know we've seen it everywhere all over social media other other companies similar companies you're putting out warnings 
um and it's probably good for those um to kind of think you know what do we need to change to make sure it doesn't happen to us mm -hmm. fortunately i don't think a lot of them have uh, done the similar things that that move have done but i'm sure we'll get on to all that in in a few minutes well you know this is kind of following on the uh in the trail of what happened with digital altitude uh, uh, have yeah. you ever done work with digital altitude that's one company i didn't really know anything about um at all so okay because it seems like it seems like the ftc did the same thing with them but their kind of spin was business coaching right business coaching uh yeah. and it, it it did deal with some of the same kind of uh you know commissions uh, uh capable you know 50 grand and above um, it's a lot of money. But this is this is on a much smaller scale uh, that uh, digital altitude as as compared to um, as compared to Mob. Now, yeah. Mob. Now, according uh, here, here's what it says on the FTC kind of thing. And, and you know, I just want to preface that I I know nothing about Mob. Like I've never I've never seen any of the products. I've never dealt with any of the people on a on a level where they're trying to recruit me. Uh, but you know, the commissions that you mentioned seem terribly higher than what I've seen. Cause I've seen the entry level price of like 50 bucks, <laughs> that, you know, yeah. you know uh, $130,000 is a long way off. Uh, I would have definitely not been a right fit for this uh, organization, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but what I will say is that a lot of people are kind of having mixed emotions about yeah. what has happened, what has transpired. Definitely. Some people are like, good, I am glad these guys have been shut down. I've seen so many people hurt from this particular business. Uh, I've seen people say, you know, they had excellent trainings. Uh, this was wrong. And then I've kind of seen people kind of in between. So. Uh, yeah. But we'll I'm we'll wait we'll wait training. we'll we'll wait for the facts. <laughs> but uh, my opinion is that if the FTC comes after you, uh, you had to have been doing something so wrong for so long that it's finally got on their radar, and there has to be something uh, that changes about it. Now, this is what yeah. the official FTC.gov site says about what allegedly has come down, which is the FTC alleges, this is quote on their page, paragraph paragraph three. Yeah. The FTC alleges that the defendants falsely claim that their business education program will enable people to start their own online businesses and earn substantial income. They claim to have a quote, proven unquote 21 step system for making substantial sums of money quickly and easily from internet marketing which they promise to provide to those who join their program according to the complaint consumers who pay the initial 49 dollars entry fee for the 21 step program are bombarded with sales pitches for membership packages that cost thousands of dollars which the defendants pressure them to buy in order to continue through the 21 steps. The defendants eventually reveal that their proven system for making money is for consumers to sell the same memberships to others in the hopes of earning commissions on those sales. And I think that very last sentence and two uh, really opens up the major issue of what happened within MOBE. And this kind of gets mm -hmm. into, uh, you know, uh, pyramid schemes, you know, I, I mean, everybody just assumes automatically that anything internet marketing related, network marketing related is uh, a pyramid scheme. Yeah. Um, have I, you I, ever had, have you ever had uh, uh, a, a kind of relationship with a pyramid scheme, Wayne? Um, most, I mean, you've got to remember before digital altitude, there was USI tech. Um, there's been four ad pay. There's been tons of these that clues. They were really easy to kind of, once you lost money in a couple of those, they're easy to spot because they were paying out more money than a business could. They were, you know, they were paying out 120% return most of these. So, 
and they were kind of pyramid schemes. They had new product. They didn't even have a product, and you got paid just for referring people. So they were pyramid schemes. <laughs> Moob, Moob um, I don't, like, legally, I don't know the exact definition of a pyramid scheme. But from my understanding, this is, I'm the same as you. I've only got what other people are saying to go by. And people do rate their kind of, their trainings. People do rate them. And some, some people I respect highly uh, put their kind of uh, success down to their trainings in move. So I think to be a Ponzi scheme or pyramid scheme, as they're called, um, the, you, do, you make money by referring people into the system. There's no real product. That's kind of my understanding of a pyramid scheme. There's no real product. There's nothing of value. If that business closed, your income's gone. That's not like you you can do anything else and um, you can't use the teachings whereas mood scene has teachings so whether a pyramid scheme or not i don't know i think the big problem which we kind of talked about earlier was the way every the, the selling was done i think that was the big kind of alarm bell point we put, as soon as people start complaining about how hard it was to get to uh, get the refunds um and how they promised a coaching call, I think. I mean, this is hearsay, so I'm not going by facts. This is just what other people say. Uh, as soon as they go on a coaching call, they're kind of upsold to get that information. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, that's kind of what I've heard as well. Now, uh, again, we are not lawyers. We're not hmm. legal experts. Uh, do your own research. Hire a lawyer uh, for any professional advice. Uh, these are simply the opinions of two men on the internet that uh, that uh, are in this industry. But yeah. uh, what I will say is that a typical pyramid scheme by the law is a a business model to which recruitment is the main form of making money into the yeah. business rather than rather than being able to sell products to make money as well. Um, now now where Mob kind of hit the gray areas they had products to sell but the revenue brought in was far greater for recruitment rather than mm -hmm. rather than selling the products this is where mm -hmm. this is where the questionable uh, actions come into play and really the hardline tactics that were being employed now uh, i've been a part of hard selling for quite some time in other industries I used to be uh, a telemarketer. I used to be uh, a person who did um, timeshare. I don't know if you know what timeshares are, yeah. but but where we would sell vacations to people for like twenty bucks. Okay, it would be for an entire family uh, for staying five five days at a resort of some sort in Vegas. But for the for the major discount they had to sit through like a three hour sales presentation for one of these timeshares. Now the horror stories I've heard from this is quite amazing. People would be left at the property like 15, 20 miles away when they're supposed to be bringing them back because they said no, uh, they would refuse. Yeah. They would refuse to, uh, let them leave. They would literally block the door until you signed like paper. So, uh, so the tactics uh, that <laughs> man, I can't believe I, I still can't <laughs> believe that people actually did this and like, dude, I would have punched somebody in the face. You trying to keep me and my family yeah, in here? Yeah. I am, I am assaulting you, okay? <laughs> uh, um, I, I am a, a United States gun owner too, so and I bring my gun everywhere I go. So, <laughs> no, um, <laughs> but uh, but the tactics that that were employed by Mob were. Um, where where you couldn't use certain levels of the product that you thought you paid for until you upgraded. Uh, like I read, I was reading this one article where this person was going through the 21 steps and halfway through, in order to view the rest of the 21 steps, they had to upgrade to the next package when in fact they purchased ahead of time the 21 steps. That was what the program was called.
Yeah. Um, and and when you're doing stuff like that, when you're strong arming people, that's that's gonna you're gonna be put on somebody's radar. And and yeah. unfortunately for Mob, the FTC got a hold of it, and now look at what's happening. Yeah, I assume the FTC kind of work like most other government bodies, where it takes a certain number of complaints for the FTC to kind of think, right, we're getting this many complaints. It, we're talking vast sums of money. The sums of money seem to be going up. We need to have a look at this. I, that's kind of – I'm not in the U.S., so that's kind of how it works in the U.K. Yeah, you um, got to you got to really piss – piss them off in order to get the attention of the yeah, FTC. I, uh, I mean, the FTC will not go after somebody like yourself or myself. Okay. The, the, it just will not happen on our level. Although, although 2003, they went after another big marker who is now an, a, on the advisory board for like FTC, better FTC. business Bureau and everything. Yeah. Uh, on the yeah. big, and he was, I mean, he w combined and, and times up by a hundred, we won't come close to what, his turnover would have been exactly. the team we would have had. But, um, yeah, so. So, I, I mean, we're, we're talking about Frank yeah, Kern, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Frank, I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, it's safe to say the name because uh, he's he's actually taken steps now to really help marketers recognize what they need to be focused on when it comes to running a uh, business online, a consulting business. He's kind of gotten away from the make money online titling um yeah. even though even though that's exactly what it's meant to do um um and and let's let's really talk about that Wayne, because ultimately we have this problem now in front of us where internet marketing is under a laser microscope more than ever uh with more visibility that we have with the capabilities that we have with YouTube, with Facebook, with Twitter, and all these social media platforms to where we can communicate our message with podcasting, this very podcast. Exactly. Now, now we're going to be recognized from much easier than it would have been 10, 20 years ago, right? Exactly. Is this kind of thing like on your news over in the United States? Is this making the news? Is this big enough to make the news? So more people come become aware of these type of programs is it that kind of big or it's 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 not that kind of big uh I, there are no major news outlets covering this now there are local channels that sometimes pick up uh these news stories uh, yeah. There's not been anything near me, uh, but I do know that uh, there's another network marketing company uh, that is located 10 minutes from my house called World Ventures. They're mm -hmm. in the business of travel, discount travel, and yeah. they also do the the start your own business opportunity. So you, you get to sell vacations, but you also get to recruit people. And they did have... Uh, a couple of news outlets um, go like undercover to one of their meetings uh, mm -hmm. and film uh, kind of the rah rah, you know, let's get all amped up uh, meetings and and sell you the biggest package that we got here. Um, where they tried to kind of bust them on on some similar things, but they're still in business. They're not doing anything nefarious. They changed some of their. Uh, some of their copy and things like that. Yeah. And, and of course, uh, disclosures were a big deal for them to, to kind of change. Uh, but when something like this happens on the scale of MOBE, um, unless, unless it, is, it, it is major in the area, and I'm assuming that Florida is going to have some of the, these stories yeah. played out, um, there's there's really no mention unless you're just doing your online kind of news stories and there are a few outlets that have mentioned it on uh, online um, but uh, what I will say is this is uh, it's not as prevalent as we may, might think simply because mm -hmm. 
um, simply because not everybody, I mean, you can go down, down any given street here in my neighborhood and no one's going to know what network marketing is, you know, no, um, Mark to no. <laughs> exactly. They're, they're gonna be like, Oh, marketing internet, you know, placing ads on, well, you know, that's kind of part of it, but that's not what we're talking about. So, yeah. uh, there's not been, there's not been any major news about it. Uh, there is obviously a lot of, a lot of talk about it in our industry and within our space uh, because we're all in some way, shape or form a part of a, you know, maybe similar companies, you know, <laughs> uh, I know, yeah. that, I know that I'm a member of, I, I'm not going to say the name. Uh, I'm a member of a company that, that is kind of in the, in the ranks of a Frank Kern uh, marketing kind of firm. Uh, mm -hmm. even it, some people even liken it to uh, a mob um but the great part is that i can take the education and apply it elsewhere and and i th i think my company is is great i can recruit people if i want to uh, but i've applied the education i've learned really to all aspects of internet marketing that i don't have to rely simply on getting these people, but what do we have to do, Wayne? What are your, maybe some of your suggestions of what somebody can do to really stay safe? I've got some uh, that I'd like to share, but the, what, what are your thoughts? Because you've been in it longer than me. Uh, yeah. So, the, so the biggest, what, why, don't, what, why don't you give some people some stuff to, to consider? I think the big, the biggest thing I can go through is company, things happen to companies all the time. Uh, they can go bankrupt through legitimate reasons. They can run out of money. Some funding can stop. Um, they can get a fine from, a, you know, one of their governed bodies, which they didn't realize they were going to get. They can go through FTC. So companies can close, even if they're making profit, even if they're being run completely ethically. Companies close all the time. So there's that, you know, don't go into keep that in mind, That's keep right. that, in mind that it can be the best company in the world. It can still go under. All right. So assume the, the safest way to to do these kinds of thing, I think, is assume that they're going to go under at some point and um, take away all that you can from it. Invest in yourself. Don't expect the platform to do the work for you. Invest in yourself and really learn what you're being taught. Um, and that's really important to understand, like companies go under for all sorts of reasons. It happens all the time. I've had companies that go under. Uh, you learn from their mistakes, you come back. People will look at it. So um, if no one knew what was going on with Move, all sorts of things would come out. Oh, Matt has gone off and he's got trillions of dollars and he's living on his Serenity Island or whatever, but it could be completely the opposite side of the truth. Um, and, and that's just gossip, which kind of happens anyway. So um, the big thing is look at their business model. Okay. If it looks like they're paying out too much money, pretty much all the kind of um, – you know, four ad pays, all the my paying ads. When you look at back at them, they're paying 120% of 100%. So they're paying 120% of their turnover, not their profits. That's near enough impossible to keep that up to any sort of scale. They can do it. They can grow on their cash flow. But when they run out of cash, they're just going to end up going under. So try and think how the business model is working. All right. That's probably one of the biggest tips I can give. So if um, a company has, you know, a product that costs hundred dollars, they give away fifty dollars. That's a business model that's going to work, Lucy. If they've got a product hundred dollars, they're giving away one hundred and twenty dollars. Like a lot of these that have gone under in the past have. You've really got to think about how is that company making money? Yeah. Um, that's really one of the biggest, biggest ones. Out of all, in the last three years, I started getting involved with these. I'm not anymore. I won't touch these with a barge pool. I create my own stuff now um, because you never know what's going to happen to someone else. I can say I'm going to be in 10 years, but I could have whatever I can create and go under and all these things happen as well. So um, try and build yourself is probably the biggest thing I can say with any of these companies. Um, another thing to look at is you look at the team run that. OK, if they've got a history of running companies and um, if they've got good management uh, names, you recognize they've got people promoting it that you recognize. If no one's heard of them, if that just appears on a Facebook post in a group you've never heard of, there's 500 comments and to build the trust and you go in, you know, really think, is this um, a company you want to join? And the other thing is 
when you want to join a company, you're looking for an opportunity, research it first. So don't be pitched to research the company and think, right, I want a company um, that is going to suit me, that's going to suit my strengths and going to teach me what I want to learn. Go out and look for it. Don't just um, go with the first company you get pitched with and rely on your emotions to really be sold to. I hope that's kind of... Uh, the advice I can really that's uh, that's huge that's huge Wayne because uh, the one thing that that I will say is always make the decision after some time has passed from the moment you've been made the offer don't ever 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 (laughs) ever pull out your wallet the moment that they say here's the 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 offer don't ever 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 say yes uh, right away the yeah, biggest we shouldn't mistake. really be saying this, but <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. You, know what? You, know what? <laughs> you know, you know what? Um, I like being transparent, and and if it takes a day, you know, you can yeah. wait a day. Now, obviously, it's different it's when anyway. when there's when there's when when there's maybe a promotion with an established co- you know company that you've done business with in the past. And there's a uh, there's an expiration date. That's different, right? We've we've yeah. done business already. Tomorrow is ending the, the you know tonight is ending the 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 special price I'm running on something. You've already done business with me in the past. You know how I work thus far. However, if it's something brand new, and especially if it's you know thirty grand uh, of a price tag, you know most people when they go to buy a car. That's you know twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars at the car lot. They go to a couple of different ones first. And I'm not saying that yeah. it's an exact uh, apples to apples comparison, but they they're gonna take their time. They're gonna do their homework. They're gonna do their research. They're gonna look up that car online. They're gonna see what the safety rating is. They're gonna see all of these things. And if all of a sudden um, you, you've simply purchased the car immediately, you leave the lot and all of a sudden you realize that this, this major problem that literally every website talks to you about, um, uh, and you bought the thing, uh, you know, what do you expect? Because you didn't do your homework initially. Now I'm not trying to say that it's your fault or anything like that. I know a lot of people can get sucked in very easily by charismatic salespeople, I get impulse mind, yeah. Um, we we and, all do. We all get sucked yeah. into that yeah, at yeah. times. We all do, and it's and it's and it's a a high. You know, you get a high when you yeah. buy something, uh, and of course, the higher the price tag, the more high you kind of get from it. Um, but I'm telling you guys, uh, do your research. Now, I'll I'll say this with a caveat: don't listen to every website because you know. People out there will will claim something is a scam when they clicked one single button and it didn't work for them. Uh, yeah. When that and doesn't even the exist, side. right? Yeah, there's and, the other side where a lot of people use it as clickbait just to promote their opportunity. Correct. So you got correct. Yeah, yeah. it's all it's all marks and techniques at the end of the day that we all we're all aware yeah. of. Yeah. So. Uh, guys, we, we say all of this t- to, to really just help you and, and to educate you as to, you know, this stuff exists out there, but don't let it p- put a bad taste in your mouth either, okay? Because at the end of the day, uh, if you are interested in building your own business and building up a business, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you time, sweat equity, uh, monetarily, it will, uh, you know, it, it will bring up these things that are necessary to to run and build a business. Uh, and and at the end of the day, if you can if you can go into a business and take away some marketable skills, uh, at the end of the day, you've done something really worthwhile for yourself. You know, as for as for myself, Wayne, man, uh, I, again, I don't know too much about Mob. I've heard the horror stories. I've heard the the people giving them praise. Uh, yeah. I really hope it works out for everyone involved. Uh, I know that that it's a painful thing. Um, I hope that these people' livelihoods are just not ruined anymore. You know, that's the thing. You can imagine someone's someone's just joined it, um, and all of a sudden they've paid an amount of money, and the FTC has stopped it. I mean, that's the big, that's the bit that really confuses me and gets me in it, 
is you know these people there'd have been people that have joined and all of a sudden it's just gone like they i don't know how the refunds will work you've seen you know all, all these kind of questions the thing they're trying to stop they've caused if that kind of makes sense they've helped so that maybe they've got it so they can get refunds if it's in the past x amount of time i don't know i don't know how it all works at this stage i don't know even really what's happening with I, me what's I going on I, technically i hope i hope people are able to take advantage of the paypal of the paypal uh, yeah. uh what is it called uh uh, dispute. I <laughs> yeah, I don't think they'll use PayPal. They'll probably have their own merchant. merchant yeah, I know, I know, I know. But what will, what will happen then is they'll owe the, if it was PayPal, which I very much state it was, they'll owe PayPal the money. So that's what will, what, what will happen then. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, guys, it's one big um, mess. <laughs> guys, it's a it's a big mess. Uh, I I truly do hope that everyone involved um, uh, uh, does does recoup everything back. Um, I hope the people who are indeed uh, in uh, who who actually did wrong things get prosecuted uh, if they if they are in there uh, because the the one thing that we cannot have is dishonest business uh, practices and uh, I really do hope that everybody gets back everything that they that they uh, you know need to recoup now uh, as far as uh, starting your own business, uh, you know, here at Traffic Domination, it's not a traditional network marketing opportunity. This is a way for you to build a business of, of, of email, uh, a legit business where you don't have to recruit anybody into the business. You'll leave with, with, with opportunities, uh, the, the ability to create opportunities for you to build your own business outside of Traffic Domination. And of course, uh, you can always refer people here, uh, but we want to be able to give you solid tactics, solid training, solid things that you can use for any online business uh, other yeah. than other than recruitment. So uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us uh, via email. You'll see that in the description. Uh, you can also go ahead and click on the link if you're following us on Facebook. Uh, click the Learn More button or whatever that button is called, and you'll get a chat bot with information on some of our free stuff for you. Uh, but, Wayne, did you have anything else, my friend? Not really, mate. Um, it's uh, been an eye-opening year so far um, within the industry. And uh, some of the companies, some of the companies I work fairly close with, they're kind of – probably looking at themselves and i don't think you know i think move was a big exception in the way they deal with things but who knows who knows what's around the corner who knows <laughs> yeah we'll see we'll see well do not get into mob because you can't uh there's nope. no more buy buttons <laughs> for mob out there <laughs> don't go trust them and our because no one will be uh, there <laughs> but thank you so much guys for listening check us out on facebook at traffic domination podcast uh you can also make sure to to subscribe to all of our channels um you know go ahead and subscribe to our podcast make sure you share this podcast with your friends and if you have any questions about internet marketing please feel free to reach out to us uh and i, I do have a free book for you guys uh you just cover the shipping on affiliate marketing go ahead and uh, click the link in somewhere in the description it'll be somewhere there for you, but it's completely free, kind of shows you how to uh, build an affiliate business from scratch. Um, and it's completely free book for you. It's a physical book. Just pay the shipping, which I believe is like six or seven bucks. Uh, but until next time, guys, this is Rob Reese and Wayne Crow, the host with the most. Yeah. Awesome. Take care, guys. See you guys. Bye-bye.